Starch is a fundamental part of cooking and is used to create structure, texture, and thicken sauces. Starch is how plants store the energy created during photosynthesis. It's stored in the form of glucose, which is the simplest form of sugar. It has been used for centuries in cooking as a way to thicken and provide texture to sauces. Starch can be found in a variety of different ingredients that you can use in the kitchen. Understanding the difference between the types of starch and how those starches thicken in cooking can really help you have more control over your final product. My name is Chef Jeremy with Lineage Culinary, and today we're talking about starch. There are two types of starch molecules, amylose, which is a long strain of glucose, and amylopectin, which is a shorter, compact, bushier molecule. Both amylose and amylopectin arrange themselves in the starch granule and are connected by hydrogen bonds. When heated in the presence of water, those hydrogen bonds begin to break and reform with the water, causing the molecules to spread out within the granule. This will cause the starch granules to swell and expand. As the starch begins to swell, the sauce will thicken. At a certain temperature range, depending on the different type of starch, but usually between 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, the granules lose their organized structure and absorb a large amount of water. This is called gelation. And when this happens, the starch molecules form a web that slows the movement of starch and water. At this stage is when starch has its highest thickening properties. Now remember, amylose has that longer strand shape, and when heat is applied, it will coil, but it still remains relatively linear. So it takes up more space and has a higher thickening property than amylopectin, which if you recall, has that shorter structure, more branch bushy structure, and does not create as much of a web as amylose does. Starches commonly used in cooking can be broken into two categories based on where they're from, root starches and grain starches. Root starches are from roots and tubers and are things like arrowroot and potato starch, and grain starches are from cereals like rice, wheat, and corn. Root starches have a higher concentration of amylopectin, so they don't thicken as well as the grain starches. They may also provide a more glossy appearance. The good thing about root starches is A, they have a very neutral taste, and B, they don't require as much heat, so you don't have to pre-cook a root starch like you would a grain starch. So things like potato starch, tapioca, arrowroot, they can be made into slurries and added to a sauce relatively easy, and it's not necessary to cook out the raw flour taste that you will find in grain starches. Often you will use root starches as a way to thicken a sauce that's already been made, kind of adding it towards the end. Now grain starches have a higher amylose content, so they will have a higher thickening power, but they do require more heat to thicken, and they can also have a flour taste that needs to be cooked out. Grain starches will typically have a more opaque appearance than root starches. There are different techniques to employing starch as a thickener in your sauces. The first is making a slurry. Now this is typically used with arrowroot or cornstarch. You add the starch to water, mix it up and make a slurry and then pour that into your liquid as it's heated. Continue to stir to break up the starches and it will thicken the sauce. Now a roux is a mixture of flour and fat, typically butter, but you can also use oil. And roux are commonly made with wheat starches. The benefit of a roux is that you're cooking it so you are able to cook out that raw flour taste and you're able to reach that high heat necessary for that amylose to start thickening. There are various stages of roux based on color. It goes from white to blonde to brown to dark. The longer you cook the roux, the darker it becomes. Here you can see the example of a blonde roux on the left and a dark roux on the right. Cooking the roux has a few important effects. First, it cooks off the raw flour flavor and starts to develop a toasty flavor that intensifies the longer you cook it. Second, the color of the roux will impact the final color of your sauce. That's why you want to use a white roux for a light colored sauce like bechamel and a dark roux for sauce espanola, which is a brown sauce. And finally, the heat causes the starch chains to break up into smaller chains. This results in less thickening power the longer you cook it. So a white roux has the strongest thickening properties, but will impact the flavor and color less versus a dark roux, which has less thickening ability, but has a more complex flavor and a darker color, which will make your sauce darker. You can also make a bourmonier, which is flour and butter kneaded together. Now this isn't cooked, so it will have a raw flour taste. So the best way to use a bourmonier is to put it into a sauce. If you just need a little bit of a thickening property, at the end, you add a bourmonier for that reason. And then finally, you can usually reduce to thicken. Now this doesn't necessarily use starch. If you've used a starch thickener and you're not quite where you wanna be with your thickened sauce yet, you can continue to cook it and typically the water will evaporate 
causing the sauce to concentrate and become thicker. So starches can be used in a variety of ways to thicken your sauces, and I hope this was helpful to help you understand the difference between the types of starches. We have videos on classic French sauces that typically use roux. It's a great way to start learning how to understand starch thickeners. If you're interested in those, I'll put some links here. So I hope that was helpful. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Chef Jeremy with Lineage Culinary, and thank you for watching.